Hello everybody, only two days left before Nebraska takes the field against Northwestern. Hello Greg Peterson, Steve Sipple for On3 Nebraska. And we heard from Scott Frost today, Steve. And uh, I, you know, I get the sense that he's pretty confident right now, especially mm -hmm. with the new role that he's gonna be taking here during games, uh, um, you know, with Mark Whipple calling the offense, calling the plays and everything. And uh, I think that it's going to really help out, you know, letting him manage the game a lot better. Yeah, I think it could. Um, Scott talked at length about that today with the media here at Aviva Stadium. It's gorgeous Aviva Stadium. <laughs> he said he could pay more. He mentioned specifically paying more attention to special teams, yeah. even helping Eric Chenander out at times. Because his head won't be buried in a play sheet. Mm -hmm. you, you understand? I mean, that's pretty big. I mean, he'll have a headset on. He'll still be in, heavily involved in the offense. But not having that play sheet in front of you, I think, means a lot. I mean, yeah. he can – I think a, co a head coach can better understand when to put the pedal to the metal if you have to. Or, or he knows if it's getting away from him to stay really positive with the guys, if the game's getting away from him a little bit. Yep. So I, I think it's a good change. I think he's, I think he's embracing the change. He, you can tell there's a little trepidation. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know exactly what it's going to feel like and how could he? He's never done right. it. He's never done it. So that's going to be a very interesting part of the game. I think it's kind of interesting to point out too that that uh, Eric Shenander is going to be right up there. Um, and the end of the press box. Um, and so that's going to let Scott, uh, you know, be in charge of the defense a little bit more down on the field. Yeah, he'll he'll see things at a different angle for sure. Yeah, we're talking about a box that's kind of in the end zone yeah. along one side of the stadium here for Eric and the defensive staff. Very awkward, but mm -hmm. it's, it'll be the same for Northwestern. Absolutely, they're um, on the other end. You know, they're on the other end, so it's not there's no there's no advantage or disadvantage. But yeah, Scott, I mean, may be able to help Eric more than usual because of that. Absolutely, and then. Uh, I, you know, there was kind of a glowing report on the special teams. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously Nebraska fans know how big of a problem the special teams have been here for a few few years. Um, but uh, they definitely, I mean, Scott even touched on it, is that they've got more speed back there than ever. Well, that was the big thing he emphasized today, uh, speed at the return man positions. And we're talking Trey Palmer, who I believe has won that punt return job. Um, I think Tommy Hill pushed him mm -hmm. this month. Uh, in camp, but Trey Palmer ultimately, I think, won that job. I think that we'll see him as a punt return man. I think we'll see Anthony Grant as the kickoff return man. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, if those guys do a good job, it can mask a lot of problems. Absolutely. Blocking problems, scheme problems. I'm not saying Nebraska has a structural problem or any <laughs> structural problems on special teams, but if you're good at those positions, it can mask a lot of things. Same with the punter and the place kicker. So I think Nebraska fans are – I mean, they're they're pretty tired yeah, of yeah, seeing absolutely. of seeing massive, catastrophic breakdowns in special teams. Absolutely, and you know, I'll point out one thing that uh, we actually got to see about ten minutes of the beginning of practice today, and um, Garrett Nelson really. Uh, oh yeah, he he took charge. Uh, he's he, obviously he is the leader on that team, and he was leading uh, the calisthenics today. Yeah, he fires the team up. Um, after calisthenics, before calisthenics, um, fires a team up in a lot of settings. He is the leader of the team, and you definitely saw that. It, I mean, he it's interesting to me because he has to expend a lot of energy doing that. It takes a lot. He's got plenty of energy. Yeah, he's got plenty. <laughs> yeah, that's the right man for that job, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and then finally, uh, you know, the team and the coaches have really had a lot of time to actually get out and enjoy the culture here in Ireland. Um, last night they uh, took in some traditional Irish song and dance. Irish dance, yeah. So uh, I think they've really start. They've really embraced uh, this trip and some of the free time uh, to get their minds off of football for a little bit. Yeah, here's what I've noticed if, in talking to various Nebraska officials, listening to Scott. This trip. You know, it was, it was a little awkward. I mean, Nebraska's in a must-win situation. It's not a perfect mm -hmm. thing for them to come all the way over to Ireland to to play this kind of must-win game. But I think as the week's gone on, they've – they've I don't know if they – I think they've warmed to it kind of. Yeah. It's yeah. – it's, I'll tell you one thing, Greg. What I see is this – is this whole 
week and everything it entails, I think it's great for the kids. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's great for the players. The as bonding well. that's been going okay, on. Okay, the bonding and just seeing Europe, mm-hmm. seeing a, a major city in Ireland like Dublin. Um, it's so much different than it's, – it's just a lot di- – I, mean, I was joking. Yeah. I was joking – before the trip with people, I just hope I don't get over to Dublin and it feels like I'm driving through Papillion. <laughs> um, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. No. It doesn't feel like there's nothing. It, is, it feels nothing like Gretna. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is a way different world. Good. It's a nice world, um, and it's fun. But it's great yeah. for the kids to see the city, and then this. Oh God. This yeah. this stadium is gorgeous. They'll and I'll tell you what, Greg, you'll remember being here for the rest of your life. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. won't live much longer, neither will I. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. So <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll die happy though. Yeah. So um and, yeah. and I also want to point out that yeah. that we have scored here with the weather all week here. It's just been beautiful in Dublin. Oh my god, that yeah, for people that are not here yet or haven't been here or are wondering 60s and 70s pretty much all the time there hasn't been much more yeah. there hasn't been much rain uh it's fabulous and game day is supposed to be kind of like this mm-hmm. saturday is supposed to be partly cloudy 60s 70s i just i just think it's uh, gonna be beautiful a beautiful game setting and then we're gonna have yeah. people in here and it's a it seats 51 7 51, and i think it won't be capacity, but it'll be a big crowd here. And I, I'm kind of uh, fascinated by how the locals kind of take it. I mean, mm-hmm. everybody we've talked to that are from here are really fired up for the game. Seems like it. Yeah, they're very interested. They're Absolutely. very intrigued by it when you bring it up. Absolutely. Well, yep. only two more days to wait, Husker fans. So uh, strap on there Saturday. Uh, you know, get your uh, get your snacks and uh, your beverages ready to go. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, we'll have football for you here real quick. All right. Thanks, Greg. <laughs>